Okay, good morning. It's Thursday, February 7th. Pasha's Mishpatim. Yesterday we spoke about Hashova uh, Saveda, returning a lost article. Now, most people, when they, uh, when they think about that mitzvah, they think you find something in the street, you return it. That mitzvah of Hashova Saveda applies to to so many things in life that we have to do because of that mitzvah. And today we'll talk about one of them. Something that in a million years you would never think that that falls into the category of Ashava Saveda. Okay? Uh, you know, when somebody gets sick, God forbid, why does he get sick? Well, there's no question it's because he has to go through this experience. He has to have a certain amount of suffering and stress and everything. And this is all ordained by God. God wants him to be sick. Is that clear to everybody? Does everybody accept Absolutely. that? I believe, it. I believe it. It's just hard to accept it. It's you mean something happens in this world that God doesn't want? No, but it's <coughs> It's clear that God wants sick. him to be sick. I, I had only uh, um, only the, uh, disease, cold. Cold is not, uh, Hashem doesn't, that's what I hear. Hashem doesn't want. Doesn't want you to have a cold. No, that's, uh, doesn't control that one. Cold and uh, taking Sefer Torah from a uh, which one should take out? Only Sefer Torah. Hakel Torah, Bemazel, Afilah Sefer Torah, Shabahechel. That's something else. Everything, everything has to do with luck. That's what, okay, wait, wait. Um, okay. Morning, Alan. Uh, not that I want to criticize you, but you, so it shouldn't happen again, you put it into the freezer instead of the fridge, the cream. Really? Yeah. I didn't know it was freezer. So Benny is suffering this morning. No, no. I told him it's no big thing, but he doesn't let up, you know. Just joking. You've got to learn how to drink a black. you got to learn how to drink Check a it black. black. If you, once you go black, you don't go back, right? <laughs> Wait a minute, you're from the Middle East. I'm from, supposedly. Yeah. yeah, anyway, so we're talking we about... Uh, Turkish coffee? Wait, huh? I said this is very good. I wanted to hear this. What I'm saying or what he's saying? What you're saying. Oh, <laughs> so uh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, you're so saying okay. Everything so everything is everything is, everything is is from God's hand. So if you get sick, it's because God wants you to be sick. Yeah. So the question arises: If God wants if if God wants you to be sick, uh, do you have a right? To go to a doctor and for him to heal you. Because the doctor is doing something that God doesn't want him to do. God wants him to be sick. So what right does a man have to do it? you got to follow that through because yeah. God also wants you to have the experience. The doctor is not curing you. Hashem is curing you. Okay. If, if the illness comes to So maybe a person should... Maybe a person, so maybe a person should, should just daven. And pray to Hashem, please remove from me this illness. I've suffered. I've, I got the message. Uh, you know, I put the uh, creamer in the freezer by mistake. <laughs> okay. And, you know, like that's enough. Like, you know, but what gives you the right to go to another human being and to override yes. what God wants? Yes. By the way. And so, also you have to do Shtadlut. Shtadlut. So, Davin. Daven, all Shadab. over in the Torah. Do you see? Shadab. Do you see anywhere in the Torah you to that you, you know to at any point somebody went to a doctor? We see all kind of people were in trouble, and all they did was pray, and they got help. So maybe that's all we should do. That's the ones that live. Okay. So the answer is yes. It does say in the Torah. Where does it say? It says in this week's parsha. Rapo yerape. Exactly. It says in this week's uh, the last pasuk before we get to Shani. It says if a man. Morning. 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 It says over here that uh, in uh, uh, chapter uh, 21, verse 19, if he gets up, it's talking about people who, if two people had a fight and they hit each other with, with, a, with a stone or with a, uh, with a fist, and he, he didn't die, but he, so now he has to pay for him, 
And he has to pay for a few things, for his loss of time, for his uh, stress. He also has to pay for healing. Okay, so Rashi says, and it's a Gomorrah in Baba Kama, Varapo uh, Yerape. Rashi says, like the Targum, like, like Targum Unkla says, what does that mean that he has to provide for his healing? He has to pay for his doctor. So the Gomorrah from this learns out in Baba Kama, okay, I'm not going to open up the page, that from here we see that Hashem gave the right for doctors to heal people. Not for that. We, would, we could not do that. The Torah had to give you that right. Um, now, because Hashem's. Hashem gave. No, no, a I, I understand what you said about giving him the right. But why did he give that right? I mean, if he didn't give that right, what would happen? Then you have to just pray. And you just have to help. pray or, or let it take its course or you die. So, um, so the Gomorrah again says in, in Baba Kamet that from here we learn that you have the right, a doctor has a right to heal a patient. Question. Does the he, right or the obligation to, if you could... Word help. for word, what I was going to ask. Does he have the right or does he have the obligation? He's graduated, he can't come yeah. to this list. Does he have the obligation to do it? I hear... I'll wait for uh, Dr. Uh, Berman to come in, and we'll ask him that question. We're discussing how do we know that you're allowed to go to a doctor and get healed. If Hashem wants you to be sick, what right do you have to go to a doctor for him to heal you to go against God's will? So it's in this week's Parsha that we learn that we have the right to go to a doctor to get healed. So Benny asked a question, which, which I was... a uh, going to talk about exactly <laughs> so Benny asks is that a right does a doctor have a right to heal somebody or does he have an obligation to heal somebody so the Rambam and you know when I quote this Rambam I do it with a little I'm not going to say hesitancy but the Rambam was a doctor you know, he was a physician. He, I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know yeah, that. yeah. He, he, that's what. That's that was his. That was his trade. That was his trade. Not he was, the, the he was uh, Egypt. in uh, Egypt. He was in Egypt for the king. Yeah, for the king. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So he was obliged to. So, so the Rambam says that Chiyuv Minatora, Lerofe Kol Yisrael, it is an obligation. You must. A doctor must heal any Jew. So it's not that you have the right to heal it, but you must do it. Obligated. It's obligated. Now, what about and the Rambam, here's where the Rambam says something fascinating. What? That? Go ahead. We'll get to it. Did you think I wouldn't? Uh, so the Rambam says a fascinating thing. I don't have the Rambam here. We should really, you know, Rambam is a, is a, is a good thing to study. In fact, you know, just like there is Daf Yomi, where we learn every single day a page, people learn Rambam Yomi. Every single day they learn a halacha, a, a law of Rambam. And it's a cycle. And I don't know how long the cycle is, many, many years. The cycle began again for the 10th or 12th time yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so, so, you have so we can, you have catch, study, up. You can catch up. You have to study the same, the, same, the same cycle. Right, right. So the whole world is doing, you know, like they do daf yomi, they do Rambam yomi. Oh, and, Rambam. And, it, and, and it began yesterday. So maybe I'll think about doing that. The problem is, uh, she, she asked a good question, the problem of it uh, to uh, help a goy... No problem to, yet, because no, I'm no going to talk problem, about but it. I, the problem on Shabbos, let's say... Uh, but I'm going to talk about that. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm, I'm, I can't read his mind and I'm going to... I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm always... I may not express it, but I am thrilled that you come up with these things, which is so... so... Uh, such a important question to ask. So, uh, so the Ramb- but here's, here's what the Rambam says, which is fascinating, that why do, do, does a doctor have an obligation to heal somebody? Does, does a, does a uh, you know, I'm not sure, does a shoemaker have an obligation to fix somebody's shoes? Maybe, according to the Rambam. The Rambam says that the reason you have to heal somebody is 
because of the mitzvah of Ashavas Aveda, for returning something that belongs to somebody that you 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 now <coughs> have in your possession, you found you have something which is in your possession, and you can give back this person his life, you can give him back his health. So he says, from that we so learn out. Sort of like we talked about yesterday. Well, that's yeah, I, I started off with that. that. Well, what about what about Azur to Azur Achicha? To why help you, why yeah. don't, let's say even for your enemy, let's right. say the enemy is uh, okay. the donkey. So, we'll, so we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. Um, now, and because it's an obligation, because it's an obligation uh, to, to heal somebody, so therefore even on Shabbos, no question, if somebody's in, 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 uh, in a danger, you? somebody's in danger, and, and you're a doctor, you're allowed to get in your car, drive to him, and uh, heal him. Or you're allowed to drive back home. What do you think? Sure. Yes. Sure. Uh, case of Hatzola, yes. I'm talking to a doctor. Sure. Maybe you're another, you're, another patient got a call. So. Yes. So yeah. Benny said the answer, yes. Yeah. Because you have to have your car with you in case another patient calls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's right. It is. What was the question? Yeah. Oh, that, driving the to, to, for a doctor driving to the hospital? Yeah. yeah. But he's not allowed to drive home. Shambler. He is allowed to drive home. Oh, okay. He's not allowed to drive home. Okay. I just yeah. said it. He is allowed to drive home. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's an error. I think case error. they don't have to be ready. Not, not only the only they, obligation they, you have is to heal the patient. But you have, uh, to, have, uh, but you have to have your car right. available in case the next person calls. Opposite. That's why Hatzola was given the right. When they take a patient to the hospital, they're allowed to drive back home. So that the next call that comes in, that they have a... Okay, I don't want to get off topic, but... No. That's the halacha. You're right. Yeah, the, because the, the, the cue is that you're obligated to do. Depending on... For example, as an anesthesiologist, yeah. I was not allowed to... I was not allowed to... Maybe as an anesthesiologist, but somebody who deals with an urgent care, emergency, I may get an emergency. If I go for an emergency, so if I deliver it, I can go there by kids driving. Because he's going to help somebody. And you feel it's an obligation to go to help. It's not expected. Can drive home. It depends on the situation. It's a part of the team. It's a whole big thing on this. It's a whole big... I had to do it. Everything on the side. All the, uh, even your why the driver has to be Shomer Shabbos for an ambulance visit? Excuse me? Why for Hatzalah. Yeah, if you, if, if you, if you, if, if something, if life is at stake and you have to run to the hospital and you got two people, two taxi cabs, one is, a, one is a Gentile, one is a Jew, take the Jew. Yeah, but what's the Jewish taxi driver doing driving yeah. on Shabbos? Okay, but this is getting a little off topic, okay? Um, because you you want to you wanna get your best shot of getting healed and the Jew is going to care more to, to get you there, you know. So you don't want to put your life in a in a in a non-Jew's hand. Is that the same uh, with a doctor, Jewish doctor, and non-Jewish doctor? Well, no. With a doctor, you should go to the one who's better qualified. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and we, we're actually going to talk about that right now. Um, now, what about what about for a uh, a gentile? Is a doctor allowed to, or is he obligated? So the source of this halacha is is a. Uh, is actually a uh, a Mishnah in in Sefer Savodazora where it says that a woman is not allowed to be a midwife for a, a Gentile uh, woman who's giving birth, and that's because you don't want to assist bringing another idol worshiper in this world. So this woman should not do it. Now we'll, we'll get back to it. It's not so not so plain. Can I say something? But you already I, did. I heard um, you should do it because I'm, I'm not talking about midwife. I'm talking about regular, you know, helping another. Let's say Hatzala. They call Hatzala, you know, the Jewish ambulance or Shabbos. They, they go in <laughs> at the accident. Should they come or should they go? Even though they are not public, there's another ambulance. They could call 911. The city ambulance should come. No, they especially come because they, they want to have a good relation with going. Okay, it's Benny. You're going to be giving the share because that's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say. It's amazing that you can figure all these things out on your own. So, you know, I have to spend at least 30 seconds preparing for this. And you can just, like, off the cuff come up with these things. We're going to talk about it. Very good. So there's a Gemara. Tomorrow, let him give it and, and record it. So, so the Gemara says an interesting thing that there was somebody by the name of Rav Shimi Bar, Bar Ashi. This is a Gemara in Gittin. And um, I just wanted to read the Tosus, but the Gemara says that, th that he that he was he healed somebody he healed somebody from leprosy. Uh, 
he was a, an expert, he was a physician also maybe, and he healed somebody from leprosy. He, I mean, some, a, a non-Jew went to him to get healed, and he healed him. So Tosfus asked the Kasha, how can he heal him? It says, we learned in, in, we said before that we brought down a mission. It says you're not allowed to help a uh, woman give birth because you're not allowed to bring another idol worship in the world. How, do you, how are you helping this person to survive and he's going to be worship idols? So Tosas gives three answers. The first answer that he gives is um, that, the, okay, let's see if you can come up with an answer. Why would this case be different than the midwife? Why would somebody coming to you to get healed for leprosy be different than a woman uh, well, helping he, in birth? He already exists. He already he exists. Enter, uh, okay, so uh, here you didn't bring a new idol worshiper in the world. He already existed. So that's number one. Number two is, and, and this is sort of a little dangerous to say, especially if a non Jews listening, it says, because we can practice on them. <laughs> Uh, for the lack of a better word, they're, they're guinea, pigs guinea pigs because this, this Jewish doctor is not going to become more experienced. Let him get his experience on a, on a, on a guy, you know. So that's, Tosas gives this answer. And the third answer that he gives is what Benny said, that there is a, there is a rule, it's called that a lot of things that we do, we do mishum eva because of hatred. We don't want Gentiles to hate us. So how's it going to look like? This guy calls a doctor. He needs uh, he needs uh, medical uh, assistance, and 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 doctor doesn't give him. It's going to cause hatred. So therefore, we're allowed to do it. Now, they hate us whether we do it or we don't do it. Huh? They hate us whether we do it. Well, but they'll hate us more. I mean, could you imagine? Like he says, somebody calls Atzola. He got a heart attack. Atzola shows up, and. Uh, starts treating him, and then he notices in his lower extremities that he's not Jewish, and um, he says, sorry, I'm not, you know, not going to do it. So, so forget about Shabbos, even in the weekdays, you know, we don't want to cause any, any hatred. Now, there's actually, in the, in the I quoted before in Mishnah that a woman is not allowed to help uh, in a midwife. Later on, the Gemara brings down another Mishnah, which says that she is allowed to. So how does the, how do you Rash, how do you reconcile? Think he's going to be idol worshiper? Well, if his parents are, that's the way they're going to raise him. Yeah. By yeah. the way, today we don't have idol worshippers. Yes, yeah, yeah, maybe in uh, India yeah. somewhere. Yeah, maybe no, in we Africa. have it. Africa. We have it here in Hindu. the shul. Hindu. Hindu. And Buddha? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me finish because... Yeah, you know, okay. So the Gomorrah now says, answers a question, answers that there is a difference that a woman is not allowed to do it, and this is, this is sort of like the, the, uh, the halacha, except I'm going to clarify it in a minute, that it, in one place it says a woman can't be a midwife, and one place it says a woman could be a midwife. The answer is that she could be it if she gets paid. If she gets paid, then she can do it, because if she doesn't do it, then uh, the guy is going to say, look, I'm willing to pay you and you don't want to help me, that's going to cause hatred. Mm -hmm. But for free, she doesn't have to do it. Because for free, she can say, look, I'm not going to do free, this is my job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm helping out the Jews because they pay me. Mm -hmm. but, uh, right. but if you don't pay me, then, then you, don't, you have an out. Right. Now the question is, uh, Shabbos. Or you're allowed to, or you're allowed to help a non-Jew on Shabbos, because technically you could say that um, you know the excuse that you can do something because of hatred is good, but you can't violate Shabbos. You know, Shabbos is such a big thing. You know, we can't let the possibility of causing a little hatred with, with a guy override this, the, you know, one of the Ten Commandments. So are you allowed to help a guy on Shabbos? They could say you do for your, for your uh, Jewish people, how come you don't do for us? Right, so, so there is, there is Tosa says someplace, I think it's Tosa says, yes, you can do that because you have it, as long as you, you always need an out. Like before we said we had an out because you're not going to do it for free. Here you have an out also. It says, we have an obligation to observe the Sabbath. Every guy knows that. It's part of the Ten Commandments. The only time we're allowed to violate that commandment is for somebody 
who keeps that commandment. So if another Jew keeps the commandment of Shabbos, so we're allowed to violate it to save his life or to treat him. But for those who don't keep that commandment, we can't violate it. Shabbos. And that rationalization, Tosfa says, works, and, and you don't have to help a guy. But nevertheless, it's brought down somewhere else that even, a, even in the case of a midwife, that you should help a guy even on Shabbos. And now the, uh, the, uh, the rationalization they give for that is because those group of rabbis that say that you're allowed to help a guy deliver a baby on Shabbos, they say, why aren't you allowed to deliver a baby on Shabbos? You'd never... You'd never you never the court or something. Unbelievable. Mm. Because it falls into the master, one of the 39 master halachas of cutting the baby from the mother. Whether it's actually cutting the cord or just removing the baby from the mother, you're like separating it and that's cutting. You're not allowed to do it. So some people say that is a biblical, a biblical prohibition and for that you can't violate it for a guy. Some people say no, that it's, not, uh, it's only a rabbinical because the baby is pretty much separated from his mother anyway, and this is just a, a rabbinical thing, and therefore you would be allowed to uh, assist uh, in birth, even for a guy. Um, so bottom line, bottom line, since we got a club, bottom line, uh, to help another Jew, of course, you're allowed to do anything on Shabbos, it makes no difference whether it's a biblical or rabbinical. To help a guy, if it's absolutely, positively a biblical violation, you really can't help him. If it's rabbinical, if it's a smaller thing, then you can help him. If you're not sure, help him. Because you still have that overriding thing of you don't want to cause hatred. And, uh, and certainly if, if it's in a position where, you, you, it, where a guy does not know or you're not sure that he knows about Shabbos and he doesn't realize, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're walking on the street, uh, a man falls in front of you and he's bleeding to death and you can't just look at him and say, you're not going to carry on Shabbos, which is a biblical thing. You know, you're allowed to carry, take a band-aid and help him because on the spot, you certainly don't want to make that kind of ruling and cause all kinds of problems. Okay, have a good Shabbos. Everybody. Thank you. Have a good Shabbos.